Hi, my name is Damon Vanderland. Uh, I'm a journalist who lives in Montreal, Canada right now, but uh, I've also worked as a journalist in other countries, including Mali, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Zambia. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me and hear me talk a little bit about my experience in reporting safely. Uh, I've worked as a media trainer for an organization called Journalists for Human Rights uh, for a few years where I worked with radio stations and newspapers in Zambia and Sierra Leone doing workshops about how to report on human rights stories. Uh, I also did a workshop series for the United Nations during the 2012 Sierra Leone elections on how to report the elections from a human rights perspective and how to stay safe while doing it. Uh, so I've been asked by Radar to do a little talk uh, about the kind of advice that I would give to journalists uh, in order to stay safe when reporting on topics that could be controversial or in situations where people might not want that story to come out. Um, I don't know the exact areas where all of you will be working, but I can uh, give a little bit of information on the risks that you might face uh, just from what I've been told uh, with a, a brief outline of the reporting that you're going to be doing. Um, now, from what I understand, you could be targeted by people who are taking part in illegal activities, uh, factory owners, the, the management, somebody who's running uh, a mine, and uh, their affiliates might not want you reporting on what they're doing, uh, if they're doing something wrong. Um, now, like I said, I don't know exactly where you're working, but... Uh, there can also be a concern with authorities in the area uh, who may be involved in the illegal activity or at least complacent in it. So that's always something to pay attention to. Uh, okay, start off first, I, I think the most important thing you need to do is research. And now find out as much about the place that you're going as possible before you begin the actual news gathering. Now you're gonna to want to ask yourself, who are you investigating? Who are their affiliates? Um, do they have connections to multinational companies? Uh, do they have connections throughout India? Um, I don't know, but that's something that you'll have to look into. Now what about local government? What is the relationship like? Do do the local authorities know that this illegal activity is happening in the area? Um, are police involved, or at least are they okay with it happening? Um, if they are, then you might not want to, say, involve them in, in your reporting. Um, not only will this and help you help you to improve your safety and that of your reporters, but you never know you might find some allies along the way if you meet people who might have uh, who might have a cause, say, uh, trying to stop this illegal activity. Now, I think that. One way, so now that you've done your research and you're ready to start reporting, uh, I think that the most important way to stay safe is to make sure that you're never working completely by yourself. Now, I don't mean that you should go out and report alone, but that you should make sure that people know where you are and you check in with those people regularly. Also, if something seems a little bit out of place, something is making you uncomfortable, uh, even if you just have a, a feeling about something, um, if uh, you're seeing the same people around and you think maybe you're being followed, uh, I, I don't know 
exactly what you might encounter. But if something does seem out of place, uh, then you should let people know. You should let uh, let people know that uh, something something is making you feel uncomfortable and uh, that they should know about it. Now, who could these people be? Uh, the people that you tell and the people that you keep in touch with and the people who you let know uh, about your plan. Um, radar is certainly going to be there for you. Um, I think that you should try and check in, um, get feedback as often as possible. Um, friends or other people that you can trust can also be kept in the loop and you know, make sure they know where you're going and they know that the work that you're doing and maybe that they know the people that you're speaking with as well. Uh, you could also trust uh, some colleagues and organizations. Uh, again, it's people that you feel comfortable with and that you are, uh, that, that you would be okay with with knowing what's going on. Now, the nice thing about the organizations and colleagues is they might have the similar resources uh, as you do um, as far as communications and having a network and things like that. So, um, yeah, just making sure that people know where you are and what you're doing is very important. I think that is probably one of the things that's going to keep you the safest. Having a plan and making sure that you are not the only one who knows about this plan uh, in case for whatever reason you need some help. Um, now, in terms of uh, letting authorities know, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's a good idea to tell police about what you're doing. But because I don't know what the governance is like in every area you're working, that is something that you will have to figure out on your own. Um, so I can't give you a definite answer about that, but it is something to think about. Now, as far as what you tell people when you're out in the field reporting, um, you know, you might be approached by people that you don't necessarily trust or you don't necessarily know. And when you are asked what you're doing and what you're reporting on by people that you don't necessarily trust, I can't recommend that you lie about what you're doing. I think that's a, a bad path. I think that um, you should never misrepresent yourself as a reporter. But at the same time, I don't think you always need to fill everybody in on all of the details of your reporting for example, if you're doing a story about illegal practices at factories, you can just say that you're doing a story about the garment industry. It's not a lie, but it also keeps sensitive information to yourself. And again, I just have to repeat that the point of this is for safety, not for deception. I think there's a big difference between the two. Uh, now, once you've met with sources, um, you know, I think that protecting your sources is a top priority, especially when you're dealing with very, very, uh, vulnerable people, as it seems you will be doing with this project, you know, people who are working in these places illegally, people who aren't getting fair wages, people aren't getting, um, aren't getting, paid well and and worse I, I don't uh, I'm not sure who you're going to meet but the idea of this project is to help help these people who are, are in very vulnerable situations not to put them at a greater risk so uh, one way to do that and you know, to also get a more comfortable interview perhaps you could meet them in a safe place if possible if you don't think that they would be uh, comfortable or you don't think they would be safe meeting out in the open. Um, this might also be easier if local organizations are involved, you know, if they were to go to this organization and, um, you know, people outside don't necessarily have to know that they're speaking to uh, 
a journalist about illegal practices, for instance. Um, confidentiality may be a concern in your reporting, especially with uh, with sources who are somehow involved with something uh, potentially illegal. And, uh, you know, I must admit that using unnamed sources can be a tricky thing uh, because most news outlets are reluctant to use unnamed sources as as those sources can't be linked to a real person. Um, it might not seem as transparent. Now, on the other hand, you may be interviewing some people whose lives could be in real danger if they're exposed, and also you know, people that don't necessarily have that much protection for themselves, especially uh, especially when you as, as journalists are not around. So you may be in a situation where you have to use an unnamed source or perhaps uh, a false name. Now, what I would do in that case is try to obtain their real name so it can at least be shared with your editor or editors if needed, but nobody else, just to let them know, let your editors know that this is a real person and and they exist, though you're committed to keeping them safe. Uh, you know, that 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 knowledge is is really important and, and just being able to to back up uh, an unnamed source with their fact and their identity. Now, uh, using unnamed sources, that can be a negotiation. Perhaps the source only wants an audio recording of their voice, but uh, but no photo, and maybe they would be okay with their name in that in that situation. Like I said, uh, it's something that's uh, it's a negotiation. So there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to people who are vulnerable and could really. And their lives could be in danger. Uh, you never know. Sometimes people, even victims, really do want to speak out publicly. And so it's also your job to keep them safe. Uh, you're the journalist and you are responsible for what gets published. So there is a certain level of judgment there. And uh, again, as with uh, checking in and being safe, it's always good to speak with your editor about this as possible. Uh, now, keep in mind, you have to have a reason to have unnamed sources. You can't just do that for anybody who might not want to be named, especially those who are in positions of authority and who aren't in danger. So, again, just have to you know, make it really clear that this unnamed source thing and keeping people anonymous is for people whose lives are endangered and usually those who are most vulnerable, not for just everybody who might not want to uh, have their name published for whatever reason. Now, if you do get yourself in a situation that makes you feel extremely uncomfortable, I think the best idea is to get somewhere safe and check in with people that you trust. Uh, and if you do really feel threatened, like if you're confronted, it may also be a good idea to mention Radar or uh, The Guardian and any other important organizations or people that you might know or be working on this project with so that the people who are threatening you know that you're not alone and they can't just single you out and that there would be you know, it would be a bigger problem for them if they, uh, if anything happened to you or if they continued to threaten you because there would be so many other people who would be involved and know exactly what's going on. Um, so remember that planning is going to do a lot more than reacting. Uh, it's always easier to come up with a plan and change it than to work without a plan in the first place. Now, I know you'll all do your best as reporters, but everyone wants you to stay safe. So keep on the cautious side of things, especially if this is your first time working on some sort of a, a project like this as a reporter. Um, 
But I'm also very confident that because you'll be reporting from places that you you might know already, you're in a better position to judge the situation than uh, someone who's flying in from overseas. So pay attention to your surroundings and uh, trust your intuition. And I'm sure everything is going to work out well. Uh, I'm really excited to hear more about this project. And if you want to contact me at any time in the future, I'd be more than, uh, than happy to hear from you. In fact, it'd be really interesting to hear from any of you if you have any questions or just want to share a little bit uh, about what you're doing or um, if you're looking for advice, uh, yeah, feel free to contact me anytime. Um, my email is damonvanderlind at gmail.com. So I'll spell that D A M O N. V-A-N-D-E-R-L-I-N-D-E at gmail.com and my website if you'd like to check out some of the work that I've done is www.damonv.com and uh, I'm sure we'll find other ways to if you don't remember uh, my email and my website I'm sure we'll find other ways to, uh, to get you in touch okay thanks for listening and good luck I'm sure you're all going to do a fantastic job Thanks.